There's a few different ways you can restore a rusty wood stove. You can have it taken away and professionally sandblasted. Or you could try using a power tool to grind the rust off yourself. But there's arguably a much easier and simpler method that often produces a far better result. It utilizes simple household vinegar. And because it doesn't require any expensive or dangerous tools, anyone can safely do this job at home themselves. We've been taking our wood stove camping for years. It's a small portable design called an Ozpig that packs down to the size of a nine kilogram gas bottle. It's fantastic for sitting around and cooking on, especially during winter nights. The galvanized legs are in great condition, along with the stove's door, but the remainder is made of lesser quality steel and has rusted badly. A few years back, I used my cordless drill and a wire wheel to grind the rust off. Sparks and dust flew everywhere, and some areas, such as inside the chimney flute, were impossible to reach. I then brushed on a few coats of potbelly black paint to make it look new again. Unfortunately, the results didn't last. The paint flaked off and the stove rusted all over again. So this time, I'm going to do things a little differently. The compact size of my wood stove lends itself to the cleaning method I'm going to show you. First, you're going to need a plastic container large enough to fit your wood stove. The container needs to be deep enough to completely submerge your stove in vinegar. This is critical because any part of the stove above the waterline will be exposed to air and could rapidly rust. I learned this the hard way. After filling up my container, I discovered that it wasn't quite deep enough internally, so I had to transfer everything into a larger container. Now, although you want a big container, large enough to fit your stove, you don't want it so big that it requires an excessive amount of liquid to fill. This is really important because the more water required to fill your container to submerge your stove, the more diluted the vinegar becomes and the less effective it will be at rust removal. Once you've found a suitable container, you'll need to find a flat level area to set it up on. You'll be filling the container with water and smelly vinegar, so it's best to set up outside near a garden tap. Any vinegar that splashes or overflows will kill grass, so set up on a concrete or paved surface if possible. Now load the rusty wood stove into the empty container. If any of the stove surfaces are greasy, such as the cooking plates, it's best to pre-clean them with hot soapy water. This will remove any oil that would otherwise dispel the vinegar, reducing its effectiveness. Now it's time to add the vinegar. There are many different types of vinegar, but all contain acetic acid. For this project, we're going to be using regular white vinegar from the supermarket. White vinegar is a clear colourless solution that is comprised of 5% acetic acid and 95% water. You could instead use cleaning vinegar from your hardware store, but it costs over twice as much and is only 20% stronger than ordinary white vinegar. I purchased 16 2 litre bottles of white vinegar. All up, it cost less than $20, and the 32 litres was enough to half fill the container. The remainder of the container I filled up with tap water. When I was forced to transfer everything into a larger container, I topped up the solution with another bottle of vinegar and a similar amount of water until the stove was completely covered. Now how long you need to leave your stove soaking for will depend upon the vinegar concentration, the amount of rust and your patience. If you're in a hurry and it's only lightly rusted, overnight may be sufficient, but most people recommend at least a few days. I left mine soaking for a full week. By that stage, the vinegar solution had turned a rusty brown color and there were bubbles forming on the surface. I set up two tubs beside the vinegar bath. The first was to clean and rinse the stove using a scouring pad and fresh water. In the second tub, I dissolved several teaspoons of baking soda in fresh water. Baking soda, also known as bicarbonate soda or bicarb soda, can be purchased cheaply from the supermarket and is slightly basic, which will help neutralize any remaining acidity from the vinegar. With gloves on, I removed each piece of the stove from the vinegar bath.
At first, they appeared a dirty brown colour, but after a light scrub and rinse, the cleaning effects of the vinegar were obvious. All the rusty surfaces were now smooth and completely rust free, with the bare metal having a dull grey appearance. Even rusty areas that would have been impossible to reach with hand tools had been perfectly cleaned by the vinegar. Surprisingly, the surfaces that were not previously rusted, such as the stove door, appeared unaffected by the vinegar, with their original black paint intact. After a good rinse with fresh water, I placed each piece of the stove into the neutralizing bath for 10 minutes, and then rinsed them again before allowing them to air dry in the sun. It was now time to protect the newly cleaned stove from future rust and give it back some bling. My wood stove has two cast iron barbecue plates. To keep these surfaces food safe, rather than paint them, you want to perform a process called seasoning. Seasoning creates a corrosion resistant and non-stick protective layer that's safe to cook on. Start by preheating your kitchen oven. Ensure your barbecue plates are dry by briefly warming them in the oven. Then coat the plates with a very thin layer of cooking oil before putting them back in the oven. Heat the plates in your hot oven until the oil starts to smoke. Then remove them and allow to cool before repeating the process at least three or four times. The more the better. Now with seasoning, there are many different opinions regarding the best oil, the ideal oven temperature, and the optimal baking time. Flaxseed oil is often recommended because it is a food grade, hard drying oil. Unfortunately, it is not readily available, so I use common vegetable oil instead. I heated the barbecue plates for 30 minutes each time at an oven temperature just above the smoke point of vegetable oil, which is 220 degrees Celsius or 428 degrees Fahrenheit. While the barbecue plates were in the oven, I moved on to painting the stove. In my previous restoration attempt, I had brushed on pot belly black paint that was heat resistant to 300 degrees Celsius or 570 degrees Fahrenheit. After doing some research, I decided to use some higher rated heat proof spray paint this time around. There are many different brands, but some of the highest rated spray paints can withstand temperatures up to 1000 degrees Celsius or 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. These spray cans can be purchased relatively cheaply from automotive stores. Mine cost less than $20 a can. Unfortunately, I used a silver color initially, which I then decided I didn't like, so I resprayed the stove with black paint. When spray painting, it's important to protect surrounding areas from any overspray. I use some old cardboard boxes. Hold the can approximately 30 centimeters or one foot away from the stove. This will ensure a thin and even layer that doesn't drip or run. I applied two coats, leaving 10 minutes in between, but follow the specific directions on your can. I chose not to paint the internal surfaces of my stove, as I figured these areas would be unseen and protected by the buildup of soot and ash over time. Although air drying takes a few hours, most of these high temperature paints don't fully strengthen until they are heat cured. If the stove fits, this heat curing can be done in your kitchen oven, but I simply reassembled my wood stove and fired it up. A small fire for about an hour should be sufficient, and after allowing it to cool, the paint will be fully cured. Well, there you have it. My wood stove is fully restored for winter camping. A big tip to keep your stove rust free and looking new is to spray it with cooking oil. This is super quick and easy and it's best done after each use while the stove is cooling down. I use canola oil spray. Well, I hope this is the last time I have to restore my wood stove. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel and join me next week when we make an ashtray for our newly restored wood stove before taking it camping. Thanks for joining me today. Hang in there and I'll see you next time.